Hi and welcome to this tutorial on the Zimmerman Trexler transition state. In this tutorial we're just going to have a quick look at the reaction mechanism and the transition state for an aldol based reaction really. Now the transition state can be uh, compared to the Kleisen or the Cope rearrangement as shown here where you get a, a six membered ring with a, a, an aromatic transition state with six electrons circulating around. So we're going to use that as kind of a model for this. So if we look at um, deprotonating alpha to the carbonyl group there using a strong base such as LDA, uh, lithium diaspropylamide, we have the opportunity to create two types of enolate. So the first enolate as shown here is a Z enolate, and if you can't remember how to assign E and Z um, isomers, then I urge you to have a look at the Karn Ingle prelog um, tutorial. And if we deprotonate uh, in another sense, we get the E enolate like this. So just to reiterate, uh, deprotonation with the LDA or any strong base will give us two types of enolate, the E and the Z enolate. Now they will lead to different products. So if we draw the transition state out, we'll draw it out flat to start with. And I'll just put the aldehyde in here and I'll get rid of, I'll put the hydrogen in to start with. But I'll just get rid of that, just to clarify the di diagram. And we can see if we join the, um, the bonds that are about to form, we can see there's a six-membered ring there. And the bonds that are actually forming are between uh, 1 and 6 and 4 and 5. The bonds that are breaking are between 1 and 2 and also between 3 and 4 and 5 and 6. But they're double bonds so they will form single bonds. So you actually end up with uh, a 6 electron aromatic transition state. And this is actually the Zimmerman Traxler transition state. So if we lived in a world without stereochemistry we'd actually be able to stop the tutorial right there and that would be that. But unfortunately we do live in a world with uh, chiral species, so the best way I've found of drawing this molecule is actually the way I've drawn it here. So I put the attacking, uh, or the, the species to be attacked, the aldehyde or the ketone, uh, right at the front there like that. Yeah, I draw a choke conformation, I put the metal at the back in the uh, top right hand corner, and then I just draw the enolate, whether it's an E or a Z. Now it's very important if you're drawing, drawing the aldehyde structure to put the hydrogen in the axial position, and that will lower the energy of the whole system and put the R group in the equatorial position like that. Now comes the tricky part. What you've got to do now is imagine this molecule in a 3D world. So you have to basically stick to that six membered ring and that's going to be the structure of the product, if you will, with the bonds formed. And then you have to rotate um, as shown here, the first part of the molecule. So imagine the methyl group has rotated forward, means the axial hydrogen has got to rotate backwards. So that puts the methyl group at the front and the hydrogen at the back. Similar process for the other side, where the um, aldehyde has just been attacked. The hydrogen goes forward, means the R group goes backwards, which also means the OH group will go backwards as well. In this case, it's connected to a metal. So that will give you the anti-aldol. So basically, the uh, E enolate leads to an anti-aldol product. Now, have a go at this with um, some molecular models or hand models or something like that to make it easier. We're just going to go over the Z enolate now, and you can see how that will lead to a different product. So rearranging again, uh, move all the electrons around, just do the reaction mechanism like that. And then the important part is stick to that six-membered ring and rotate some of the equatorial and axial protons and, and alkyl groups. So if we rotate uh, this time to put the R group flat, that's all I'm trying to do, uh, the hydrogen comes out uh, to the front, the methyl goes to the back. Similar for the other side, which is just formed, the hydrogen comes to the front now and the R group goes flat, pushes the oxygen to the back. And that gives you the syn aldol product. So a Z enolate will lead to a syn aldol product. Now the hardest part of the whole of this um, reaction mechanism, if you will, is trying to predict the product. And that's probably why you're here watching this tutorial. So my recommendation is to always draw the product from that six-membered ring and you should end up with the right stereochemistry at the end. Practice obviously makes perfect for this kind of thing, so you just keep practicing. And also just uh, one caveat on the whole thing, this is a model and uh, the actual outcome or the actual stereochemistry can vary and this is only a predictive model for
quite simple system. So the stereochemistry around the enolate will affect the actual stereochemical outcome of the process. Similarly, the metal ion um, will affect the outcome of the process if you've got a different kind of metal ion. And then if you start using chiral species uh, or chiral ligands around your, eno uh, your metal ion or your enolate, then rather than just getting uh, a set of um, isom uh, enantiomers as a product, which you will do because you will get an enantiomeric mixture of this. This is a racemic um, mechanism, if you will. It will give you a, a racemic products unless you use uh, chiral auxiliaries or you use uh, some chiral catalysts or something like that. So these are things to bear in mind. So don't think you'll be able to go in the lab and be able to predict the stereochemical outcome. You will do for very simple systems, but you have to really think about the stereochemistry around uh, your enolate and your metal ion when you're doing it for real in the laboratory. So I'll put some worksheets up on Epistemio so you can have uh, plenty of practice for this because that's really the key to this kind of um, process. You, you've got to be able to practice all these mechanisms all the time to be able to predict them uh, with confidence. So that's it for now. Bye for now.